Hey Groovers, welcome to the show and I'm in very high spirits today. Do you know what? I, I couldn't explain or express how low I was yesterday and the day before because I didn't realise what was happening to me. And I've realised now AI <laughs> had infiltrated my life so much that I'd completely lost myself in it. Because I've been... You know, over the last couple of years, I've been, re you know, I mean, I really seized AI at the onset, um, the new, the new wave of AI. I'm talking about AI as a creator and taking hu human creativity from under us and um, hijacking it. And I, I rode that wave because I was interested in it, the mistakes it was making and what, what a what strange what a strange beast it was the organic growth of it and i was really intrigued by it um but it's it, its biggest limitation is that it's so powerful and that's its biggest limitation because when you if you think about a despot leader who's really powerful and everyone's petrified of it and nobody is heard Nobody can be heard or seen anymore. It, th that's a failing of humanity, isn't it? Do you see what I'm saying? Nobody can do anything amongst it, in it, around it, around the despot leader that gets shot or, you know, do you know what I mean? There's, there's no room anymore. The power's too big. It's too much. The, small businesses can't cope, can't compete. Designers can no longer compete because you know the the consumption of new material and i mean this is an old it's, it's a capitalist idea consumption of product it requires to evolve the, the by definition it needs to increase all the time consumerism needs to increase all the time otherwise you know we'd be we'd be born eat sleep poop whatever and then when we're sort of 18 we'd buy what we needed for the rest of our lives and we'd live in the same house that we that was going to be fine for the rest of our lives that'd be it but then capitalism would be dead so the consumer has to be created i mean the consumer's created at naught years old the, the babies don't know it but they're consuming already and they're consumers of the future until they die and we're all consumers we're all consuming something um, from somewhere, from some producer. And it's it's based on a capitalist paradigm. You know, it's a, a formula of capitalism. Um, and the problem with AI currently and the way that AI has taken over and taken control of the internet and Facebook and Twitter and... LinkedIn and all of these places is there's no room for friendship because you're you're you don't know who's real and who's not it's too difficult to tell you have to sh sh sift around and and then eventually when you do find out that somebody isn't doesn't really exist you know typically I mean I've been looking at artists on Facebook and these artists don't exist and, and you've invested time in this artist and you've thought wow I wonder where I wonder what their technique is. I wonder what school they went to, you know, which art school they went to. And I, I want to know their story, their backstory. Because when you buy a piece of artwork, you're buying into a backstory of a human being. You're not buying into a group of men um, and some venture capital that um, created the monster of AI. That it, There's no story there. What's the story? That's not a story. That's... There is no backstory. It's just capitalism. Um, anyway, so I've been working. You know, I mean, when I when AI first came out, Mid Journey, I was using um, about two years ago. I've been using it for, um, I think, and suddenly eighteen months, but maybe possibly two years. And it was really interesting because it was making all these mistakes, and I loved the mistakes it was making. You know, people with three heads and. Um, you know, five, six, seven, eight fingers, whatever. I loved them. I thought they were really curious and really interesting. 
Um, and, and now they've ironed those problems out pretty much. It's, their hands are still terrible. You always have to do the hands again. But, you know, they've, it's no longer interesting for me as an artist. Um, it's not coming up with these totally random, unexpected things. I remember reading, I think it was David Bowie, who would get a book and cut up the words and put them in a jar, shake them up and throw them out and make a song. I mean, I don't know if this is true. It may not be. Make a song with the words as they came up in order, you know. Um, and I guess I was doing a bit like that, you know, using chance and uh, as a seed for my creativity. So I quite like that. I quite like that. Um, it's, you know, I mean, it's kind of quirky. Um, having ideas that I wouldn't ordinarily have had I mean, it's really good if you're lacking a bit of inspiration. It's a really good method. I did it once with poetry, which was really exciting. I mean, you know, trying to make sense from nonsense um, or just using the nonsense. Human beings like to make sense of things. So even if you gave somebody a list of nonsense, they would, pr you could probably give that to five or six different people and they would all think about it and then they would say oh well I think it's about the meaning of life or oh I think it's about relationships or do you see what I mean because human beings can't help but organize things and make things sensible and as an artist um, I always know as well that you know if you leave something blank or dark people will make up what's there they will just make it up their eyes tell them what's there it's curious isn't it but it's so true um so anyway, I was I was working with AI, I wrote it, and uh, lately what I do with AI is I, if I need a model, um, so I've been doing the, some dogs, um, people cuddling dogs, and I generate a model so that I don't have to use a picture that's online. I don't have to use a model who hasn't given me permission. So I, it's a fake person and it's a fake dog, um, and then I use that as a, a starting point for my marker pen drawings. Um, and it's it's really interesting. I, I, the end product is really interesting. Um, I'm using digital marker pens. I'm, I'm doing lots with it. Do you know what I mean? I'm taking it to uh, more levels and um, of human interest. You, you know, it doesn't look anything like AI did it by the end of it. You can tell it's a human hand that has executed the artwork. Um, there's a big difference between digital and AI. Digital is just a format of, um, of of creating an artwork. And there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with a digital artwork. And you can have them, you know, you, you have your image and then it, it's printed, it's printed out. You can take a photograph of that digital printout and then print it onto photographic paper and it's you know nobody would know it was digital um it just depends i mean if you blow it up and you can see pixels you know that it, at some point it was computer generated so that's that's one way of knowing um but if it's you know if you take a photograph um and play around with things you know you're you're able to create a beautiful artwork that to anybody looking at it you know it's no different so I, I'm quite happy working with digital I mean it's saving me an awful lot of money and materials um it doesn't quite feel the same but I'm, I'm really good with my pen and I'm really good with my iPad and I'm sort of learning the craft we're doing much more hands-on with paper and things like that at the academy um, because that you know that tactile element is really lovely, really nice, and I think getting mucky with your hands and having to wear an apron is really quite a cool thing to do. You know, it's um, it's important, especially for young children. You know, it's really important that they touch and feel and get, um, yeah, just make a mess, just make a mess. So um, we will be doing that. We'll maybe do some tomorrow for for the academy. Anyway, the AI concept that you know that I was initially so intrigued by it's just become another capitalist enterprise 
with no soul. And when you're on social media and you're seeing so much AI contact content that is soulless, you become, part of your soul is evaporating. Because if you're walking around just looking at soulless stuff, engaging with soulless beings, um, interacting with soulless content, what do you think is going to happen to you? You know, you're going to get really bloody depressed. That's what's going to happen because we need soul, especially, especially if you're a musician, especially, especially if you're an artist, you know. We desperately need real people and we desperately need relationships and the ability, the, the, the positive interactions that you can get with real people. I mean, look, I'm, I don't really like very many people, um, you know, online. I mean, I'm forever backing off from situations online and I, I can't bear <laughs> interacting with too many people online. Don't get me wrong. I don't like all that stuff. I'm not on Instagram. I've just come off Facebook again. Um, I don't want to do any of that. But, you know, the, there is always um, an interaction. For example, if I go to, um, you know, if you go to YouTube and there's there's lots of really amazing cellists on YouTube sharing um, tips and lessons and what have you, you're engaging with a human, even though they don't know you're engaging with them. Even though they don't know who you are, even though they don't know you're watching, you are engaging with another human being, uh, uh, albeit in, in a digital platform, and you're not touching them, you're not sitting in the room with them. You are There is an engagement there. But if you had an android there, you w- there would be no soul in it. And I'm not sure that they're ever going to be able to make soul. I don't think soul is copyable. I don't think you can give artificial intelligence or androids or robots soul. And, you know, I'm running the risk here of sounding a bit religious, and I'm not at all religious, but, you know, there is an X factor, and this is what the Book of Immersion is about, actually. There is an X factor, and I'm working through the the conditions for soul what are the ingredients of soul? It's really, I mean, it's almost unexplainable, isn't it? So exploring that, I mean, it's, it's something that makes me really emotional, actually. And, and it's the thing that when you die, vanishes at, at, away from your body. It's gone. There is no soul in a dead body. You know, and this is this is why AI makes me depressed, because it's like a dead body. It's dead meat, you know, it's dead person, it's dead inside. And I think we have to be really careful. And I think we have to be really careful for our children. I really do. I think it's a curse, actually. We're going to I mean, we should be legislating uh, that it's really clear from the get go if something's AI or not. Because this is the problem, it's duping people. And I think therein lies a crime. I th- I do believe it's a fraud if you are told that something is re- real or the implication is that it's real and it's not. Do you see what I mean? And just because it's going to damage our kids so much. And it's going to damage vulnerable people. And it's going to damage people who are easily led into um, criminality or, you know, I don't don't know, other dodgy practices. So I think we have to be really, really careful, guys. I really do. Anyway, join my TV show because most of it is nothing to do with AI. Um, look, there's a bit in the record production, but there's always a human, you know. I'm, I'm, I am at the helm and I am a really, um, I promise I'm human, <laughs> really human. So, um, yeah, OK, um, vimeo.com forward slash on demand forward slash iServerlan. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>